Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it Katie and Farmers TV. Uh, today in studio we are going to talk about animal husbandry and with me is Dr. Jared Ombasa who is a vet surgeon and a private practitioner. Welcome to the show uh, Dr. Jared. Thank you Philip. For the... I know I've introduced you, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and exactly what you do. Okay. As you have heard, my name is Dr. Jared Ombasa. I'm a vet surgeon and a private practitioner. I run a clinic called Linden Veterinary Clinic, whereby we treat small animals like dogs, cats, snakes, parrots, and the rest. Okay. Yes. When we talk about animal husbandry, what are we talking about exactly? Mm. Animal husbandry, from my perspective of veterinary, is a part of agriculture, whereby we take care of the animals. We take care of the farm animals by raising them well, so that we get buy products from them like milk, meat, eggs, wool and the rest. Okay. Yes. Um, when we also talk about uh, animal husbandry, I've seen uh, once in a while um, the, um, the, Kenya, um, the Kenya Wildlife Service, mm -hmm. they also have vets mm -hmm. that take care of their wild animals. Is still that uh, animal husbandry? Yes, it's part of it. Okay. Yes, yes. So, why is it important? Why is animal important? Animal husbandry is a very important aspect to us as a country or as individuals because of various reasons. Animal husbandry, when you practice it, is a source of income. It gives you income for your day to running of activities. For instance, if you are owning cows, dead animals, you get milk, you sell, you get income. Also, animal husbandry is very important for creating job, uh, job opportunities. It's a source of employment. When you own a farm, you employ milkers, feeders, those who take care of these animals. So it creates employment opportunities to either youths and also the whole people. Okay. Yes. As a country, do you think our farmers are practicing the right uh, animal husband um, practices? Yes, actually as a country, farmers are doing very well. Because actually, in terms of agriculture and veterinary, 60% of our economy is being supported through animal husbandry, especially those people who do mixed farming of animals and also growing crops. So as a country, despite being affected by corona pandemic, we are doing well. Okay. Yes. Uh, are there <coughs> types of animal husbandry that uh, our farmers practice? Yes, yes. There are several types of animal husbandry, whereby, for instance, there's dairy farming. Dairy farming, what do I mean here? Dairy farming is the rearing of dead animals like cows, sheep, goats, for purposes of getting milk and meat. Every, everyone in the, in the world globally, people are raising these animals for commercial purposes so that they can get income and get the foodstuffs what we consume. Most animals produce products like milk which are essential nutrients for proteins. Yes. Another, okay. so continue. Another form, branch of animal husbandry is pea farming. Bee farming, you know, traditionally we used to just harvest honey from bees and eat raw. But nowadays, because of the global changes, there are pie products we make from bees, whereby we use the larva stages of bees to make cosmetic products, then also make some drugs for that purpose. It's not only honey or wax. Yes. There is also poetry farming. Poetry farming, although farmers in Kenya have actually done what we call broilers and layers, whereby from poetry we get eggs and meat. There is also pig farming, where we get pork for consumption. Then there is also fish farming. Fish farming, fish is an essential protein to our bodies. It has what we call omega-3 fatty acids which are nutritious value to our body. So currently there is new technology which has come in. Apart from getting fish from the lake, nowadays they have introduced what we call cage fishing, whereby you put your fish on cages so that we can meet the demands of the market. Instead of just depending on the few fish which are available or getting the Chinese imports. Yes. So when we talk about uh, these types of uh, animal husband, there's always the process of also uh, farming or farmers trying to improve also their breeds, mm -hmm. which is breeding. 
mm -hmm. how important is breeding uh, to farmers? Breeding is very important in this essence that once you do proper breeding, you improve the yields of the type of breeding you are doing. For instance, let's say for a dairy farmer who has cows, you need to change, you enhance your breed standard to a higher level. You can do what we call crossbreeding. Crossbreeding is a, a, a situation whereby you get an animal which is a good yield in milk, you cross with an animal which has what we call disease resistance. So once you mix this, there are chances of getting high milk, high milk, then at the same time there are chances of minimizing this animal from getting sick every time and again. So breeding is very key, it improves the genetic makeup of the animal, then it creates new technologies which has come into the market. Okay. Yes. In the process of improving the genetics of the animal, uh, how long does it take? Are there shorter ways of improving this genetic makeup of animals? Yes, yes. There are several ways you can do that. For instance, there's a traditional way of doing artificial insemination, whereby traditionally people were just using a bull to mount on a car and get this. But nowadays, new technologies have come in, whereby you as a farmer, you can just choose the type of semen you need. What do I mean by saying this? The type of semen is that you can decide this time, I need my cow to get an haver or a male or female. You can decide and it's successful. Then at the same time, there's what we call embryo transfer. Embryo transfer is a technique whereby you can have harvest an ovum from a weak Ava, then you put it to a surrogate cow. Once you do that, you can get several Avas at the same time, which are of high value to us. Okay. Yes. When you talk about a surrogate cow, what do you mean? Surrogate cow is a cow which produces weak offsprings. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to help our, our viewers also <laughs> understand okay. some of these terminologies. Yes. Also, when it comes to breeding, um, what are some of the challenges? Mm -hmm. that comes with, with breeding? There are several challenges which comes with breeding. It depends what type of breeding you are doing. I can give an example like dog breeding. Dog breeding, you know, initially people never used to take it serious. But from the ascent period, you know, dogs were the first animals which are domesticated mm -hmm. and they were used for hunting. But nowadays, people have taken it very serious as a commercial business. But what challenges do they encounter? One, People lack enough information on how to manage and breed these dogs. Two, there is outbreak of several diseases. People also, they don't have enough capital to sustain the breeding standard which is required. Okay. And most people just like doing shortcuts, which is not the right thing. Okay. Yes. Also when it comes to uh, animal husband, how important is nutrition uh, to these animals? Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of nutrition, the input you get is what gives you the output. At the same time, there's a saying which says, sharing is, care, is caring. If you don't give good nutrition to this animal, be assured the output will be low. So for you to get good outcome, you need to put thorough nutrition, whereby you need to balance the diet. For instance, if it is cows, you give ravages and concentrates, then you balance that diet. Without that, you won't need enough milk or even meat. Okay. Yes. How, do, how can a farmer, or if I'm a farmer, how do I know that whatever I'm giving my animals is a balanced diet? Mm. For a farmer to know that, they need to go through the training or now to mix feed ratios of feeding their animals. Without that, you'll just be giving anything. But there are trainings farmers go through or there are literature books which are being sold, you can study or you get an expert or information from other vets who can train you about nutrition and feeding of the animals. Okay. Yes. Growing up, I remember we used to herd cows. And the, the only thing we used to do is wake up, milk the cows, go walk around with them. Mm -hmm. The only thing we used to give them in the evening maybe was salt. Mm -hmm. Was that enough nutrition for those animals? No, no, no. You know, that's a traditional way of keeping animals. But nowadays things have changed. There are new technologies whereby you can store your feed well, you can bring in f new feeds, then you feed animals. The traditional way of just freelance, then now giving salt was not enough. That's why the milk production 
level was a bit low during that time and like nowadays. Okay. Yes. So um, for farmers who would like to uh, also improve the byproduct they get from the animals, mm -hmm. uh, how where do they get this information, especially what you've talked about? Because mm -hmm. even now people still uh, feed the animals that, the traditional way of just uh, mm -hmm. uh, told you. Mm -hmm. So how do farmers get information on how to do it better, how to make sure that mm -hmm. uh, apart from just having them walk around, they still need to come and give them a few things in the evening apart from salt? Mm -hmm. uh, what normally happens with this information is readily available. There are colleges which offer courses concerning nutrition. Some farmers have enrolled. There are big farms in this area, is around Nairobi, which have large lunches of animals whereby some farmers just go they get training about from feeding management and all that so we advise our farmers visit these areas all call a competent qualified veterinarian to explain to you how you can manage and feed your animals without which you just be not feeding them well okay yeah. and also when it comes when, when, when we talk about feeding uh, is feeding uh, of animals the same across board all the animals Yes, it's a, yes, it's so it's, yes. it's the same. The way I feed my cows, the same way I need to feed my chicken, mm -hmm. my goats, my pigs. Uh, no, 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 no. It's different. Uh -huh. If in terms of different animals, the way you feed dairy cows is different from the way you feed beef animals. The way you feed your chicken is different from the way you feed your goats because the outcome is different. For instance, the supplements you can give to dairy cows so that they can give you enough milk. At the same time, for poetry, there are supplements you can give so that you can get quality enough eggs. You cannot feed the same feed of chicken to cows, and yet the byproducts are somehow different. A chicken cannot give you milk, isn't it? Yes. But a cow gives you. Okay. So there are nutrients which a cow needs so that it can give you enough milk. Okay. But I can follow the same formula in that uh, I make sure that their feed is balanced, whether it's a cow, whether it's chicken. Pigs. Yes, you can, although the mixing ratio is quite different. Okay. Uh, there are supplements which are protein, different supplements, they mix. There's a way we do the ratio of mixing, and now you feed them. Okay. Yes. Uh, one thing that has, uh, farmers have always complained about mm -hmm. uh, is the cost of, of feeding mm -hmm. or the cost of production. Yes. It's very high. Are there ways that farmers can bring down this cost of production? Mm -hmm. No, for farmers it's not easy unless now we get what you call government interventions. You know most of these raw materials for animal feeds, over 50% come from countries like Uganda. Uh, if a government can intervene and look for a way it can do subsidy, then farmers can reduce the cost of feeding. Others, without that, it can be very hard because for you to get the output required, you need to give in a lot of the input, yes. And it's very key, feeding is what determines what you get from this animal, yes. I also understand there's something called record keeping. Mm -hmm. How important is record keeping when it comes to animal husbandry? Mm -hmm. In animal husbandry, record keeping, in any enterprise, not only in animal husbandry, is very key. Yeah. Let's say, for instance, you have 100 cows in your farm. Suppose you don't have any record. How will you tell the milk, the amount of milk from this cow is these liters. The amount of milk from the other one is these liters. So record keeping is very important for, for check up on the performance of the animal. You need to know how is this cow performing. Through record keeping, you can know which animal is healthy, which animal is sick. Through record keeping, you can know when the animal is expecting to be served when this animal delivered, how many, how many times has it delivered, when to do lactation period, and that nice. So record picking is key in any farm to determine whether you are progressing or you are not doing well. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Dr. I'm told we need to take a short commercial break, but we'll be back in a few. For our viewers back at home, if you are joining us now, today we are talking about animal husbandry, and with me is Dr. Jared Ombasa who is a vet surgeon who is explaining to us what animal husbandry is and why is it important to us. We will be back in a few.